afternoon, thank you all for coming. My name is Mekka Neger. I'm a member of United Voices of Cortland, and uh, our mission is to create a healthy, loving, caring community. And part of it is to share information about vaccines, um, what they might do in your body. And if you are um, interested in, in the information and what you like, you want to hear today, um, we can give you also further information on how to opt out of vaccinating your child in particular, your loved ones, um, and uh, the various regulatory uh, protocols that are there, the, the state laws um, that we have to deal with. So I give to you Dr. Dawn Strangers, who wrote a beautiful dissertation on how to work allergies out of your system. So she does fabulous work in energy work and other ways. wisdom is, and I'm going to 
recommend that everybody here does that, which I think you've started or you wouldn't be here. What we're going to do next is look into, like, are you children's school age? Yes. Okay, and um, so you're looking at, they're going to school soon and you need to provide something if they're going to be immunized or not, right? Yes. Okay. They actually require an immunization next Right. Okay, so this is probably a good time for us to talk about the legal aspects of immunization, and this is from New York State, okay? Um, it, um, you, there is, um, there has been a medical reason that you can get your child from having the immunizations and having to, you know, make them get the immunizations or provide information. The, the medical is if you've had anybody in your close family who's had a strong negative response. Okay, so that's hard to prove unless you've got like a child that's already autistic or, or, one of, or you or your husband or something else. Judge Michael A. Teleska 
wrote an important precedent setting decision. Here's the quote. This court may not pass on the wisdom of the belief, nor on the manner upon which she came to hold that belief, providing that she maintains a sincere and genuine religious objection to immunization. In other words, once a person decides for religions of religious conscience that they do not want any more shots, the decision is valid, even if they previously had their child immunized. So you need to know that because that's one of the arguments they may, may bring up. Oh, well, you know, you already had some immunizations. So now you're changing your mind. So the case is also important because the family in question was devoutly Roman Catholic. The Vatican is not opposed to vaccination. This decision allows individual members of a mainstream church organization to hold personal spiritual beliefs in addition to their church's official doctrine. What's more, the family had previously sought and had been denied a medical exemption from vaccination. The judge's ruling renders this point irrelevant. So, um, this, uh, keep this and you can refer to it. There's a little bit more information. This comes with some uh, reference sites that you can go to to check out the immunizations and different information, more information about it, okay? So you, you, establishing a medical um, reason is very difficult. It can be difficult at this point. It wasn't as difficult before. Um, then there's the, the spiritual, if that's how your belief system is. Questions? Um, I do have one. Mm -hmm. I'm actually encouraging my children to be vaccinated with the flu. I'm not a fan of that idea. And there's good reason that you shouldn't be. Do um, you have some information you can share with us, Mecca, <laughs> about flu, flu shots? Well, I understand uh, from, uh, there's been one video uh, done in a sort of comic way. Oh, let's see what they are throwing into a flu shot vaccine. Oh, yes. And I believe that the fluid you use for your windshield wipers um, uh -huh. goes into that vaccine, right? Probably so you like, huh? Okay. okay. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, when, once people hear that, perhaps they're thinking, this is seems to be a real um, toxin that should probably not be in my uh, bloodstream, in my neuros yeah. neurological system. So, yeah, if you can <laughs> take it from there. Yeah, it's a, a, it's a great video. And then um, they also throw, and he takes a thermometer and throws that in, because you got to get the mercury in there. That's a preservative. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you a little story about that. Um, I, in the past, had done... Um, Wellness coaching, uh, and um, they go into companies, the, the insurance company would go in and everybody get their tests with the triglycerides and stuff. And there happened to be um, a nurse there that was giving flu shots. I thought, well, this should be interesting. <laughs> so she said, it's extremely important you tell us. You have to screen if the woman is pregnant or not. She'll get, she has to be handled differently. I said, oh, then why is that? And she said, well, um, some of the constituents, they get a, a different flu shot than the other people do. I said, and how is it different? And she said, oh, it doesn't have the thimerosal. Now, thimerosal is the preservative that they put. And I was shocked because I thought they'd outlawed it. It's mercury. So that's something, and the amount and the... The vaccines that they prescribe for babies, and they prescribe for the mother babies, um, that amount of mercury is more than is allowable by law, according to the Department of Health. So parts per million of a child that's acceptable is exceeded by what's in the, the um, vaccines they have. Yeah. So they do have some vaccines that don't have it. And I would say, too, if people decide to vaccinate, please get them singly. When they start putting three of them together, they're more dangerous. 
it's more for the immune system to overcome. It's very difficult. So if you must immunize, I would say one at a time. And if you can hold off, then that would be better for the child's health. Everybody knows that the baby and the newborn's immune system is much more fragile. And it's no time to be giving immunization if you've got a system that's jeopardized and there's really no way to tell. So that does explain why we're having healthy fever. Absolutely. They're in response. Their immune system is kicking in. They so are. Well, we're under attack. They do in the immediately after the last time watch for healthy fever. Correct. He does that. There's a doctor, um, Dr. Len Horowitz. Um, he is an MD, and he says that um, if you want, what you can do is you can, if you're questioning your MD about the safety of information about vaccines, ask your doctor to take on the responsibility for whatever the outcomes would be. Are they willing to personally do that? That's a good question. I know my kids got a little more aggressive with the shots because that. last year I refused to give them the shots. I didn't have a problem with, with the doctor's office and I said I'm rejecting flu shots this year. But this year, he said, well, they didn't get it last year, they should really have it this year. I told him I wasn't a very big fan of it, they should really have it this year. So I don't know exactly why he's certain and argumentative. They, their job is to get everybody immunized. In their belief system, everybody needs to be immunized. But there's information that you can get um, on the web um, from MDs that debunks how effective these shots are. Um, some of the charts show that the um, incidence of deaths from pneumonia have actually gone up after they started flu shots. Now that's, you kind of have to hunt to get that statistic because it's not something they're going to track. But there's a lot of things that aren't tracked that are effects of the vaccines that you're not going to see reflected in their statistics. My son is an example. It ended up that taking it into my own hands and using energy medicine, he's fine and healthy today. I don't believe that would have been the case had I listened to what everybody else wanted me to do. You have to, you have to listen to your mother's intuition. It's an extremely strong and true force. And listen to that. I wish I had, and I would recommend everybody else to. So if you have a vibe about something, yeah. follow that. I really don't trust the people. And you've had experience, too, with health challenges. Yes. So you have to protect your children in any way that you, you feel, because you know those children better than anybody else. you an expert. So... Any other questions at this moment? Um, maybe something I'd like you to speak on sure. is the history of cancer viruses in vaccines such as SV40. Okay, I'm not familiar with that particular one, but I remember back in the 90s, uh, they were just, maybe the late 80s, they were starting to look at, wait a second, what this guy named Dr. Strecker said, and he was a biochemist. And he thought, something doesn't make sense about HIV. So he did some research and found out that the places where the HIV started had actually been immunization locations from, I think it was the CDC and maybe World Health Organization. They started to immunize against, I think it was hepatitis, but this is where the outbreaks were. And it was, you know, due to virus research, governmental virus research, that they had been designing vaccinations, including their, you know, their virus research and mutating and that type of thing. So he, pr he placed a pretty um, 
provocative and convincing argument about how that had been engineered and then spread of course. So I think there's a long history of this and then they use in the, also in the immunizations are included um, like washed sheep blood cells and um, cloned other materials. Uh, Pardon? Yes, there's formaldehyde. Formaldehyde has been shown to interrupt mental processing. So, it's, and then if you've ever noticed, sometimes you walk into a store, they put formaldehyde in fabrics, and sometimes it's like a powerful smell, and you get kind of woozy. That's your brain's response to, you know, the formaldehyde. Um, that's not really good. So, and um, they use, uh, they used to use, I don't know if they're still using it, um, monkey kidneys to clone some of the viruses that they use in the vaccines. And um, it's very, um, there's a lot of problem with contamination of other viruses and who knows what. So that's another factor that's, you know, injecting that into the body doesn't seem to make sense to somebody. Do you have any information you can give us on the nanotechnology that's being used in some of the newer vaccines? I personally don't know enough to speak about it. Um, I know that they are using a lot of technologies that if we knew about them, we logically would probably say, I don't know if that's wise to put that into my body or my dad's body. Um, so I don't, I don't know enough to speak with any authority about that. I know that it's going on. Yeah, well, I, I know from my own personal research that some of it is being used. For example, like they're looking at, we'll call it a, um, a vaccination against depression. And what it does is the nanotechnology goes in and it destroys that part of the brain that enables you to feel that emotion. So that's what some of that's being used for. Yeah, and they do similar with the um, anti-anxiety. It affects the part of the brain that modulates anxiety, but frequently it goes in the wrong direction. So it kind of exacerbates. And then, two, if you look at the statistics, which I've got some information here and some references on these handouts, um, or people could contact me and I can um, give them some references. Um, if you look at the references about how much damage there was, for instance, with whooping cough versus the whooping cough vaccination, uh, that's the cure is worse than the ailment. I think my big problem with immunizations is I got all of my immunizations as a kid. Mm -hmm. Measles, mumps, rubella, all of them. But the thing is, is that I think I was 10 at the time. Mm -hmm. I went into school. My cheeks were a little swollen. They sent me home. When I was in the doctor's office, I was positive for mumps. Twice. So I'm not too... I'm not too big on vaccinations mainly because of that. Honestly, chicken yeah. pox, I would rather my child got chicken pox. Yes, and probably better off in the long run. Now, in the old days, um, there was a lot of wisdom about health in the old days because people did for themselves a lot. And you find some of these remedies that uh, now they're finding through research that, oh, yeah, there are active constituents in these natural things that are helping. So some of the wisdom from the old days was, a measles party, a mumps party, a chicken pox party. And what people used to do to, if you want to say, immunize their own children. One was infected, they'd send all of their yep. kids for Lorena. Little Teddy's got the measles. Hey, Gloria, would you like to send your kids over like we were talking about before? Because my son has the measles. Kids would come over. And um, my granddaughter's not been immunized, thankfully. Um, when she was maybe six or eight months old, there was a rash, and it was measles. And I, so I did some research online and found that um, I like anthroposophic medicine, which is 
Stein are based on, like Waldorf schools are based on. And it said that, and this was, this is a very powerful statement. I found most of the things he said to be true. The immune system to be healthy requires a flare up and a die down of fever. That's how it gets tempered to be strong as we grow older. So when we take away the fevers from measles, mumps, you know, um, chicken pox, some of these other things that aren't, I mean, the drawbacks, I suppose there's a tiny percentage of people that have problems. But now they're finding, you know, you could take your pick on some of these things. Um, very compelling research by Dr. Andrew Wakefield, whom I have met and spoken with. A couple of times. He's a hero of mine. He's a hero. He's a hero. He's a hero. I think we have a video that we can watch here um, in a few minutes of where he's featured. Uh, and it's about whistleblowers in the CDC. You can go on YouTube, I think, and find that. And put that in. We're going to watch that. It talks about the history of the CDC, Center for Disease Control. Um, who makes a lot of decisions about these immunizations and such, and they keep the statistics. I have one that they are very big on handing out medications. What for is this? Yes. yes. My yes. daughter was eight months old, yeah. and she's developing, like you said, rashes and high fevers. And I had taken her in, and they immediately said, it's teething, let's give her some Tylenol, let's give her this, let's give her that. That's, their, that's the response they know. I actually had argued with them. Because of the level of the fever, I argued with them and demanded they find the root problem, and it was not heathen. I have Very sure lots of children hit 104. Yeah. No. Um, I actually wound up arguing with them to the point where they threatened to call police. They, and they can get into that. And what happened is that they went getting her doctor to come in. He immediately looked at her, noticed one of the rashes, and informed them it was roseola, which medication would not resolve. Right. So, you know, that was one of the things that really frustrated me when they're willing to shove pain medication, Tylenol, whatever they can think of, into my eight-month-old child. Well, one of the, the pieces of research that um, Andrew Wakefield um, became famous for, um, he was a researcher in England, and he started working with autistic children and trying to figure out what's going on here. Because there's been an explosion of autism in the last 30 years or something like that. I mean, it's just gone up the charts like crazy. And um, so he's, he was a gast he's a gastroenterologist, and he started to put scopes and found out that particularly there was a link with the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and the formation of the lymph nodes in the intestines that will get very inflamed and pussy, which is very unnatural uh, on a regular basis like he was finding. So he published a paper which got published in Lancet magazine, which is a highly respected medical journal in England. And um, I believe that they probably didn't realize the implications of the research when they first published it. So then, basically, the word was out. Oh, wait a second. There's a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. Um, he later went on to show in further research that, indeed, the earlier the MMR vac vaccine was given, the more detrimental it was. Um, in particular with autism. I personally can tell you that my niece got an early measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and was never the same after that. She was, I think, a year and a half. My daughter was the same way, and I held off on my son. That was good. I think, and like I said, my daughter is the same. As yeah. much as hers me to say that she is delayed. Right. And I do feel that there's more than what they're calling a processing disorder. Um, there's some things, too, that can be done um, homeopathically to address some of those things, which we can discuss later. Um, so on this video that we have, 
Dr. Wakefield, have you seen that that um, video of Dr. Wakefield talking about the CDC whistleblower? I have seen a few videos of him. He was also featured on the Kevin Trudeau show a mm -hmm. few times. Yep. Yep. He's got um, um, a major message that needs to be heard, and um, it doesn't conform to conventional medical approaches. So, you know. Yeah, unconventional is oftentimes worse better than conventional. Well, a lot of us believe that, and I've seen it over and over again. I've been doing this for over 30 years, and I certainly have seen plenty of evidence. Conventional has repeated pattern of error, where oftentimes unconventional has resolved, okay. which is why I do appreciate it. Well, and I think the important thing is that people have to decide for themselves. I mean, it's your journey, and when you have your children with you, you're responsible for them. So you need to go what route you want to go. So if that's for vaccinations, then you can find plenty of places to get the vaccinations. If you don't, then we're giving you some resources here to follow your own intuition, and there's an internal knowing of sometimes that this is not right. And then you need to follow what is right in your heart. Right. It's very powerful message. And so that's what we're doing today is giving you a bit more information to make your informed choice and to follow your calling of what you feel you need to do and to give you support. I'm learning that they're trying to give medication for literally everything. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to the local hospital several times for the same problem, which is low information. And every time I've gone, they've given me a different diagnosis. The um, lymph is a very misunderstood system. Um, and actually, we have a, a, a lymph drainage massage specialist coming here shortly after we get done with our meeting. Um, she's an expert. She does lymphatic draining massage, um, and which has created miracles for people because the medical establishment they don't know, like you said, you get different they, you know, diagnoses from different practitioners. They've gone so far as to diagnose, diagnose me with cat scratch fever and then inform me to be turned over to the health department because it is one of those illnesses, you know. But I knew it wasn't cat scratch fever because I had not been bitten nor scratched by any cat. Um, this has been an ongoing problem for a couple of years now and, you know, I've had several different doctors tell me different things, all within the same structure. And I've had a couple of doctors that told me they have no explanation for it. None. Well, that's really a step forward because if people can, instead of guessing and trying to fill in the blank and give you an answer no matter what it is, it's better just to say, I really don't know. I have had several problems to where I've gone in and told them I'm having slight pains around them. Mm -hmm. um, they're pressing on areas which is causing fatigue, just different things, and they diagnose something different every single time. It's always something new, something I'd never heard of, wind up having to go home to look up. Right. And a lot of the times, the medications they prescribe for me have nothing to do with it. Likely. And sometimes the side effects actually make the, even the original complaint worse sometimes. Yeah, so. I've been kind of that as well. Yeah. It's just very important for you to follow your heart. You have questions, you need to get them answered. We're here today to help provide as many answers as we have and to give you more information for you to go on, for your decisions to feel right to you so you know you're going on a path that's right for you and your family. So I think it's great that you've come here today to get more information for your children's sake. Um, do you have any questions? Is there any other treatments besides medication as far as mental illness goes too? Absolutely. I, I can show you one. That way too much. This is one of the prime ones here. <laughs> Meditation. That I agree with. I have a class coming up starting at, uh, September 8th at Center for the Arts in Homer. Um, I've helped a number of people through um, leaving their depression, anxiety, or similar disorders in the past 
there has to be a desire to do so. And if you have a desire to do so, you can find ways no. that you are peaceful with that can help you. Meditation has helped these folks and certain other things that we can do for energy medicine. Some of them have come to me and said, I really don't want to be on medication. I don't address the medications. That's a personal, a personal choice for each person. What I can do is support their own immune system, their own health and balance, help them, show them how, give them ways to do it themselves. And we can then become more balanced, and then the mental health gets better and better as does the physical and emotional. Like uh, they had me on five medications for depression, anxiety, and what they said borderline personality disorder. Now, now can, those, can this still help with children as well? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, it's in a way children fall into it a lot easier than adults because the adult mind is, oh wait a second, these other people have been telling me this. Um, children, if it makes sense to them, you know, how honest they are, they're like, they just fall right into it. They love it. And I like working with kids. I think it's really, it's a wonderful thing for them because it helps to reset some of the mechanisms before they get further along. This basically can help with a lot of um, diagnoses and labels as far as psychiatric centers and stuff go to. Well, because I, I mean, that's one system. <laughs> that's the allopathic system. The allopathic conventional medical system, is, their, their protocol is to find out what's wrong, and then they give some kind of treatment. Use frequently medication, or it could be surgery, interventions like that. Um, those are called invasive. Um, in the holistic healing arts, we're looking at a partnership with our client or patient. And we learn from each other. We you know, the, the client teaches us or the patient teaches us what's, what is their complaint. And we teach them, okay, here's some things that we can do. We're focused on solutions. So the diagnosis isn't that important. And sometimes it can go into the emotions. It can go into the memories. I've actually had encounters with one child in particular in her teen years. Yes. Who battled depression and anxiety and every negative emotion you possibly think of. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that once she was separated from an entity, she was perfectly fine. Yes. But once that entity took place back into her life, she had a spiral, like a downward spiral. Yes, I've experienced that with some clients that I've had. But and teenagers are, are especially susceptible. That's, that's about their energy field. Going from a child to an adult, it dissipates and they don't have the protection that's there. And that's, they that's with my theory that it's a, a type of thing that can be trained into a child. This particular yeah. child was told from a very young age, it's okay for you to be depressed. You were born sad. You're just meant to be sad. Right. But there needs to be a view. I mean, that basically depression is hopelessness. So that's just feeding it. Yeah, that's feeding it. That's not trying to embrace it and heal it. Right. Um, and that's what we can do. We can balance and heal. We can support the immune system. And some of these are spiritual crises that are going on for people. That lead them into depression, anxiety, or other conditions. This child's mother was intent on having her medicated. Mm -hmm. And I was not having that. You know, I don't like children being on forms of medication like that for long term. Um, by the time she had maybe finished one prescription, she said, I don't want to take it anymore. Which was the same thing I had. I did not want to take the medication anymore. She mm -hmm. just looked at me and she said, I don't want to be sad anymore. So she found other ways to cope mm -hmm. with it. But the problem is, is when she found these other ways to cope with it, and she was brave enough to tell her mother, mother, I'm not on the medication anymore. Mm -hmm. Over again, you need to be on the medication. You were born sad, and you will be sad as long as you don't take it. Well, we weren't <laughs> born to be that way. And here's a question to ask yourselves, too. Do we have these conditions because we have a deficiency of medication? No, I think we have these problems because we have a lack of ability to accept surroundings. 
And sometimes it's biochemical, sometimes it's emotional, sometimes it's spiritual. Um, when I was told when I came off my medication, I did speak with a psychologist and a physician at the same time. They both said the same thing. Sometimes the medications can keep you in that position. Absolutely. Because of the chemical, it could be a diet plan, it could be right. anything you're ingesting, breathing in. Yes. It could be social surrounding. Yes. So changing each and every one of those on like an elimination process Perfect. would actually help. Which it didn't for me. I changed my diet. I cut back on chocolate and candy. You know, I wound up coming into being more into the fruits and more, you know, not so much the fatty foods. Right. Um, and that's so helpful too. Um, now one thing that with um, whether it's autism, depression, or headaches, anything that's going on here, there's a thing called the gut-brain axis. So if you've got problems here, whether it's processing headaches or any of these other things, chances are very good you've got some problem here in the intestines, which Dr. Wakefield found evidence of, you know, hard evidence about that. Like for the autism. intestines, which will affect another part of the body. Right. So we have to take care of the intestines and have good food. We have to have fiber and natural foods, which is what we were designed to process. And, you know, we might need some supplements to fill in. But if we have a healthy diet, then anything up here is going to have a much better chance at regulating and balancing. There was some very fascinating research done years and years ago. They took some prisoners that were schizophrenic and very um, had a lot of extreme mental challenges, um, imbalances, behavioral problems. They took them off of cereals. They were in lockdown because the behavior was so bad. People regulated. All of them saw benefit. Some of them returned to like normal behavior. And so what happened? They reinstituted. <laughs> giving them all these cereals, you know, like the grains, meats, and so on. Then they went back, bad again. Schizophrenic, we're talking about, schizophrenia. Not that that's the reason for everybody, any, any schizophrenic problem, but it was a powerful message that how our diet affects our mental and emotional health. So that's a great place for people to talk. Okay. Getting into all kinds of... I do have allergies which will cause migraine mm -hmm. um, outside of my allergies. I don't really get too many migraines. It's more um, pollinated pine sap, um, something like that. That would, when it comes to the time of year where pine trees are stopping at our harvest, it's right. going to get even more affected. Or a fresh cut gets more affected. The pollen as much. But um, the thing that I actually encounter in migraines is I don't take medication. Yeah, that's um, smart. I'd rather hydrate than sleep. Yeah, that's better. What I I've, I've got my this is my dissertation on the allergy here, <laughs> which Mecca was referring to. Um, what I found in that research was that um, I used energy medicine for it. The testing isn't really that accurate. That is conventionally done. So I use muscle testing. And that's the body talking to us. Because we have all the answers. That's one message I want everybody to understand. Anything that's wrong with you, anything that's going on, you have the answers inside. It's just a matter of getting them into our awareness. Muscle testing helps us to do that. So the allergy is actually the body going into an alert response. Your defense mechanisms come like this. And then when something triggers, spills over, then you get an allergic response. So if we can bring down the reason, this is the, the premise behind the research, is what if we went to the core of the reason why our body's in response mode, defense mode, and we balance that. So the body doesn't need to feel that we need to respond with defense. Then what would happen? Well, what happened is people weren't allergic anymore. It was like um, about um, 70 to 80 percent 
reverse line and take symptoms and severity and things like that. So that's, it's kind of like um, if you become enlightened and aware, spiritually awake, you realize that there are no factions to fight. We're all one. So if you think about somebody who's spiritually evolved, like the Dalai Lama, like Jesus Christ, then these are not people that go and fight. Turn the other cheek. So we don't have to put them out those defenses if we know that we're all one. Then our health is better. I know some kids had allergies. My daughter, she showed allergies. She did one of her allergies was red eyes. It was done in almost every processed food. Yes. She learned out every time she ate it, she would wake up in the other night and have to come in. Um, That's her body's way of getting rid of it. What we actually did is we cut the red dye out of her diet, yeah. which was a lot. It was bologna, hot dogs, mashed potatoes, juices, even if they weren't red. Um, there were cookies, there was everything processed. We had to cut it out and slowly eliminate everything. And by the way, a lot of the children's medications have been covered in Some of them, which were clear, I looked them up, actually had a red dye on them. So I don't know why they do that. You know, <laughs> the blue, blue juices, which you okay. think have red dye in it, they had red dye. Um, the green ones, then you had the yellow. Which we have to get red. just the right color, right? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, everything had red dyes. I got to the point where she wouldn't want to have orange juice or uh, apple juice or something in fruit as opposed to the actual kid drink juice. Yeah, you really have to watch that. So, um, I did run an experiment where I would only, I used to be the one who would use only the box of mashed potatoes. My daughter started getting a little nauseated and nauseated, so then I started slowly hand making and then mixing and processed in. Yeah. She'd still have a little bit of it, but she not as bad as it, it wasn't as bad as it was just processed. Um, but more into the natural you would see less symptoms. So I did see that a lot of the processed yeah. foods are causing a lot of problems. But yes. yet because they also produce something within the body that gives a desire for more. So Exactly. Exactly. And one of those things that give us a desire to consume more is sugar. But you can get it more potent if you make it high fructose corn syrup, which the body recognizes mostly as a plastic. So it's like very difficult for the body to process it, which creates more problems metabolically. So if people, st I've, I've noticed that over the years they're putting high fructose corn syrup and stuff that never had sweetener on it. And I think it's to create a palate that is addicted and wants to buy it again and again and again. See, I've so seen, watch out for that too. I've also seen a high starch products yeah. in the same. Um, yeah, some of them who are higher in sugars or in salts do the same. It's yes. that kind of thing that gives the, it takes away the alcohol in the body and adds in an extra and causes you That's why they serve pretzels at bars. I, I, so you eat the salty food and like, oh, I'm really thirsty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've become addicted to Coca-Cola over the years. I, I can't stop drinking it no matter what I do. I've tried getting away from it and I always go right back to it. So I'm right. one of those Coca-Cola freaks. I don't, I won't try to hide that. I have at least six or seven bottles at all times. But if you get the one with the sugar in it stuff. <laughs> I know, so the high fructose corn stuff to the point to where I've tried water in between mm -hmm. the soda drinks. Um, I can't drink milk. I don't know why, but it's the homogenized milk. I have very big complications. I do have something in my stomach where I can't tolerate it. The fresh off the farm is different. Right. So we need to go back to some of these original things that our grandparents were talking about. So I'm almost thinking whole it's milk and encouraging more naturalized foods. Yep, more natural foods, much better. Anybody in the healthcare profession will tell you that the older people that were eating like basic natural food for most of their lives before everything got so processed and chemicalized are in much better condition than the young ones who've had so many processed foods. It's just real hard to detox.
a lot of those chemicals. So I actually noticed the same thing within meats. Um, meat actually had the store packaged meats, and then we've also gone through a butcher to get the fresh packaged. Um, and we've actually seen that we felt healthier, we felt better, less depressed, less um, less aggressive with surrounding. Mm -hmm. When we were going through the more natural butcher avenue, when we were going for meats right. or That's true. anything else, or um, as opposed to the the treated fruits and vegetables at grocery stores, right. going to farms and getting them ourselves, yes, felt better for us. Much better, much better to do uh, if you can get local fruits. A little much more better. expensive than. Sort of well, if you're looking at just the cost of the food, but what about the cost to your health and the cost you're going to have in healthcare expenses if you use the inferior products that have chemicals? We went five months with untouched, uncontaminated patients. We did five solid months of that. And in that period, I think the only five months up to eight months, I think it was. In that period, all we had was checkups. We were healthy. Mm -hmm. We had less common cold. We had less everything. It's important more and more so now for people to take care, take good care. Um, I've also got I've got some information that I'm going to. If you want me to email you more information, I can do that. Um, There's an, I wanted to share with you too something. I went to a um, vaccine awareness um, conference that is uh, the National Vaccine Information Center. Um, their website's www.909shot.com. Um, in this uh, conference, they had a couple come up who shared what had happened with their son who had um, gotten immunization in the hospital as a newborn and uh, kept caught up with all immunizations and at the age of two was diagnosed with brain cancer. So they were given the diagnosis and what the doctor prescribed should be done for it. Found out that they went home and did the research online. They found out that the chemotherapy that was prescribed was not found to be effective for that type of brain cancer. So they went back to the doctor and said, no, thank you. We want to do something else. The doctor said, well, that's too bad because you have a choice here. Either use the chemotherapy I prescribed and stay with your child, or the child will receive the chemotherapy without your presence there. In other words, it was a case of the um, medical negligence, medical, parental medical negligence that they were going to enforce. So the parents said, well, okay, we want to be with our child in this couple of time. They had to wear, they were in the hospital with the child, they had to wear rubber gloves to protect um, from the burning of the chemotherapy when they changed the baby's diapers. The baby unfortunately had to go through that for two years and then um, it was said that the, the baby actually passed away at age four. The parents insisted on um, an autopsy and found that the brain cancer tissue in the tumor was simian, it's a for simian in nature. That means it was monkey cells. Where would this child get monkey cells? Vaccines. So I actually looked into that, and they said that they wanted, they were experimenting with it because apparently they found the monkeys had an immunity to some of the human animals, and they felt that they had immunities to some of ours, that we would gain immunities. But at the same time, what they didn't consider is that we have some immunities that they don't which is infecting both sides. Well, the, the, as I said before, monkeys, um, using them in that way, it's just another stream of contamination that's coming in, and then we're injecting it to ourselves. I think at 
one point I read a study that they said that it seemed to be that monkeys were um, immune to like, the AIDS and HIV viruses or something. But at the same time, they're not a, they're not immune to cold viruses. So. It's just it's I don't know. It's just to me it's you're messing with a divine plan and health and structure. And I don't see how it can really come to a good end as far as it's, you know, I know. Not, it's not health-based. One woman I talked to, she did state, she said that she was very religious. She said humans have the ability to live forever. Though we might have the ability to do so, the lifespan might be increased if we stop trying to intervene with some things as well as they can yeah, especially in our natural ways. It's just not, oh. it's not in our DNA to be having to contend with all these unnatural influences that we're importing. Which is the other thing that I was looking at with people I know who have been diagnosed with cancer on a number of occasions. I've actually been paying attention to two of my friends with cancer, one of which is going the medical route, another one is going the herbal route, the more holistic. Both went into remission. One kind of went back into cancer, and the other did not. The holistic one did not. The one who was going through chemo, radiation, and all sorts of treatments, she's come out of remission four times. Well, the thing is, um, during cancer, it's important to support the immune system. And if you think about it, chemotherapy um, creates an extra challenge. I'm um, understanding how radiation, which is said to be bad for us, being injected directly into the system is supposed to help. I kind of well, that's a medical it's question. <laughs> so, uh, to me, I just want to help people support their immune systems because I think that makes the most sense. And, it, you know, I can help people if that makes sense for them. I never used to believe in a holistic type thing, but mm -hmm. in a natural way. I never used to believe in that. I used to think, oh, Tylenol will solve it, or um, the doctor will prescribe me something. Then I got to the point where I started doing more, if I'm sick, more fruits and vegetables, um, you know, things like that. Or if I have a migraine, hydrate, sleep. Um, I never used to think of this. Or if I was tense, pee, not anti-anxiety medication. I used to be the one that would take the medication and say, okay, yeah, right. this will help. But I'm realizing less medication, more natural is helpful. Absolutely. So, more and more people are waking up to this. And I would like to thank Anne for helping bring this message to people that there are additional options that may not be evident in their environment, but nevertheless are there. So, we're inviting everybody to look deeper into the details oh, that bring questions to their mind and give them some disquiet. Like, well, maybe there is a better way. I think maybe there is a better way sometimes, you know? Um, thank you. Um, a couple, another um, couple of uh, resources for uh, vaccine information is Dr. Ten Penny, dr dr10penny.com. She's an osteopathic physician who has a lot of information about um, vaccines and immunization. She's got statistics on there too. That's a very good site. Um, also, www.boughtmovie.com, B-O-U-G-H-T, movie.com. Um, they've got some videos on there. If anybody would like to see them, I have them all, them all lined up here. They're free to watch. That's them. great. That's great. So, also, um, thelibertybeacon.com. Pardon? TheLibertyBeacon.com. TheLibertyBeacon.com. Uh -huh. That's the whistleblowers on the CDC. That's with Dr. Wakefield and telling the uh, history of the CDC, um, starting in the, I think it was 40s and 50s, with the black population. And they did syphilis research and experiments where they did not treat people. And then the CDC allow that to continue once they became that organization became the CDC. 
and they're, they found that also something people should know is the MMR immunization or vaccine causes twice the autistic damage in black children and specifically 3.4. 3.4 more. And black males. And black males particularly. So um, I really look into this. Go on, follow these resources. Don't take my report. Go and do your research. That's where the truth lies. You can find it. It's inside you when you find the truth that resonates with your heart. You know. These sites also tell you what's in each of the vaccines. That's which is even more perfect. scary. That's perfect. So we've given you some resources, and um, I've got a couple of sheets you can take a look at. I can email them to you. You can give me a call if you want to. Um, my number is 585-465-1460. If, if you want any more information, if I know where to get it, I'll refer you to that. If you um, want do me to email me sites, yeah, I can do that too. Yes. We've got their emails and phone numbers here, so we're going to email the people that were here. We're going to email the list of pediatricians, uh, doctors that we're giving. Uh, those around those? here, I don't know any okay. that are, you know, holistically oriented. I would like to find a doctor that is less apt to do these. If you know many, let us know. <laughs> Because we've got a community resource table here that Micah has made lists and, and we've got her list over here. It, I mean, but we're always looking for people that are more holistic to support our health and immune system and balance. I was absolutely like head over heels for the practice of my case doctor all the way up until I started encouraging the flu shot. Because it got to the point where I take them in, saying no medication, I'm, I'm not giving medication for this. Or um, if anything would do minimalist type thing, if it wasn't absolutely needed. Mm -hmm. And you know, one point my kids were to be tested for ADHD at the request of the school. The diagnosis was looking at the children, because how old are they? I told them how old they were. He said, Oh, good, they're children. Test over. <laughs> you know, so it was just right. one of those things. I mean, I, I love that about it, but at the same point, it now feels like I'm getting immunizations shoved at me. And that's, that's, we can look forward to more of that, I think, uh, unfortunately. That's why you need to get educated and have a leg to stand on why you choose to refuse. Right. And, and you have to back it up. Um, we do have um, some documents that are legal documents that, you know, I use all through my children, and they're still using it as adults. It's an affidavit that says, I believe, in the sanctity of the body and you know, that type of thing. So that's another possibility. You can contact me if you that's would rather have actually, a legal like document you. like that. But from the information I gave that I handed out, you have the right to say, this goes against my spiritual beliefs. And I would say, if that's the case, because I don't believe in stating things that aren't true. So, wouldn't that also fall into a civil, a civil liberties type thing? Yes, absolutely. So, Especially if they're countering your desires, but you have to watch it because my understanding is you can't say this is for medical reasons unless you have absolute proof. They can just say, well, that's not proof. Well, I'm more wondering about the civil liberties aspect because I would find it invasive. I find it invasive. Yes. Mecca is the one that you could speak to about that because she's a member of the ACL. That's what I'm wondering because I find it invasive for them to tell me I'm required to give my children the flu vaccination. Or but they're, they're getting more and more like that, like this with the medical negligence. I have not had a flu vaccine in, I think, 12 years. And the last time I had it done, I was violently ill for the days. Well, now that could be a medical basis. For why the immunizations My kids had a shot done two years ago. My daughter was sick for two days afterwards. So well, I would refer you to Mac about the exclusion aspect because it is a rights issue. But you have to do your homework on your foundations. That's what I'm 
over here mm. about the vaccines well okay good well like I said mm. let us know if there are any more questions or comments or anything so listen to your heart follow your heart and your intuition and it's not going to lead you wrong so I want to thank you for coming today I sure do appreciate it and um, uh, follow your heart to stay healthy, okay? Healthy and balanced and happy. So, uh, good health to everybody here. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Sure do appreciate it. Yes, it's a pleasure. Well, we You validated it. everything I've been talking about for the last 10 years. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, it's wonderful that you're um, giving a voice to that in the community and, and for the, uh, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody be in good health. Okay, happy and in good health. So thank you thank very you. much for coming. Thank you. You bet.